Okay, in this video here, I'm going to show you guys how to add a tile map, get jumping animations done, how to make her walk in both left and right, as well as get it so that her collision shapes swap back and forth between her jump, her jump shape, and her body shape before it actually, actually hits the ground. So, that's everything we're going to do today. Um, I'm probably going to try to get the morph ball done as well. Um, since it's been a while, so this is probably going to be a long one. Alright, dropping guys. We're in for a very long road. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to add a top map. So just click up here, do new scene, and we're going to change this to a tile map. And after that, we're going to click over here. It's going to go on this side over here where it says tile set. Just click that down and put new tile set and then click inside of it. You should get a um, something that opens up like this. And then once you do that, go in and get your tile set. Um, I'm going to leave this actually linked below. So if you need it, feel free to uh, use this particular one. So, so anyway, um, all I did was I took bits and pieces from the map that I left linked in the last video and I just cut them up to 16 by 16 tiles um, and then I put them on a 64 by 64 image it might sound a bit confusing but you'll s if you download the, the uh, picture you'll know what I'm talking about so anyway this thing here is going to tell me if I want to automatically create the tiles and I'm just going to say yes and as you'll see down here it automatically created all the tiles for me so each and every single one of these tiles is 16 by 16 with the exception of the bottom ones here um, I did mess up um, I overshot it by I think two pixels for each of these but aside from that um, the rest of these are in fact um, 16 by 16 so once this is done uh, what we need to do is we need to go and click on one of these I think it's in the tile set if I'm not mistaken yes um, and then over here you're gonna see where it says physics layer and you click that down and then hit add and then you should see Okay, there we go. So make sure it's not on setup, make sure it's on select. Sorry. And then you should see a physics drop down. Just open that up. And what we're just going to do is put, we're going to click these two buttons here and then hit reset to default shape. And all that's going to do is create a, sh a collision shape, um, taking up the entire the entire image that we selected. Now you can do your own like custom shapes if you want using the add poly uh, polygon tool. But um, for what we're doing here, it's gonna keep, we're going to keep it super simple. And um, just a, a, a note here as well. Um, when you add collisions to your tile map, it's going to automatically set them to a layer. And all these layers are is it's telling you what layer the image is going to be on. And then on the collision mask, it's going to tell you what images or excuse me, what um, layer is looking for. So any sorry about that. So once that's done, make sure you select on this thing here. And when it says uh, tile map go where this little pencil is and you should see this pop up here and when that when that uh, pops up excuse me I'm lost for words here when that thing pops up you'll be able to draw on it so I'm just gonna create a little play area for us I think that's our entire thing yeah just to make sure she doesn't like leave the box or leave the area um, oh by the way that's that's right click to draw and then if you want to remove a tile you can just left click it I think I said that backwards, excuse me. Let's try that again. <laughs> left click to draw, right click to, to remove. <laughs> All right, now that you've created your level, I'm actually gonna create some platforms for her to jump on because platforms are fun. All right, so once you're happy with your level, um, do control, uh, control S to save, go to your scenes folder, and we're gonna call this tile map. Then the next thing we want to do is we want to new, do a new scene. We're going to do 2D scene, and this time we're going to leave this as a node, but I'm going to change this to world. Whoops. Wow. That's not how you, that's spelled. Let's try that again. All right, world. Okay. Then after that, we're going to add. Um, oh, actually, you know what? No, we're not going to add anything. We're going to instantiate. So click on the uh, root node here, and where you see the chains, click on that. And what this is going to allow us to do is pull from our other scenes that we've created. So the first thing we want is the player. 
And then the next thing we want, make sure you, again, you click on that, that uh, root, otherwise it'll get parent to whatever is uh, currently highlighted. And then we're gonna add the tile map. And the reason why we did it this way, instead of just adding the tile map over here, and then having the player and all that stuff, is because in the future, if we ever wanna reuse this level, um, we have the option to. So, like I can make, I can uh, add this, this particular level to as many worlds as I want. But anyway, um, now that's done, we're gonna control S, and then we're just gonna save it as world. And now with that done, if we hit play, and I'm gonna hit this one here. Beautiful. We will no longer fall. So that's done. What we're gonna do next is I'm going to fix her animations. So in the last video, um, I showed you how to click in here and go into the sprites and then kind of like daisy chain, whoops daisy chain these together um, I just went ahead and created a bunch of other tiles not other tiles um, other sprite sheets using your excuse me, the original sprite sheet just to make it a lot easier so I'm going to show you what I did here so I'm going to delete all of these I don't want them anymore and then I'm going to hit this button again and this time which way is she running left so this one will be JL think right JL is what no that's jump it should be RL which is run left so we're gonna open this up and as you can see here it's a lot cleaner so all we're gonna do now is we're gonna count these these pictures one two three four five six seven eight nine ten we're gonna do ten and then we have zero vertical rows so like that and now you can just select all of them if you want and then add and now they should play in um, properly now again they're gonna still run backwards so you're gonna have to do that but you know like I said I showed you how to fix that in the last video but this is just gonna streamline things um, in the future so we're gonna do that again delete all this crap da -da 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 -da. and I want the new stuff oh if you're wondering uh, these sprite sheets if I remember correctly are 40 pixels by 40 pixels um, so if you're ever creating a tile sheet in the future uh, make sure that you have a set um, resolution for it and always use that one for um, throughout for whatever animations you're doing. That way, the that way Godot can properly cut them up like this. Anyway, so I'm going to add this without all that jank that we were doing in the last video. And good, she runs. Beautiful. Um, is that proper? Yes, it is. Okay. I mean, she's not running in the proper direction, but whatever. And then the next thing is, um, if you ever want the animation to go faster, you can go up to here and you can change that to whatever you want. The lower the number, the slower she goes, the higher the number, the faster she goes. I think I had it at 20, so that's where we're gonna leave her at. And that should end that. So, let me get a drink of water here. It is hot in this freaking thing. Is the fan on? Can I turn the fan on? That's not plugged in, wonderful. Oh well. First world of problems. Okay. <clears throat> so, like I was saying before, we want to add um, a jump collision shape and we want to add a morph ball collision shape. Now, in games, at least in 2D games, or at least in Godot, the way this is going to work is I'm going to add it right now collision shape. Okay, and we're actually gonna name, rename these. So we're gonna call this standing collision, call for short, and this one will be our jump, call. Okay, and then we need to add a shapey boy, like so. And we're just gonna add this, um, I think I had it like here, around here. And we're gonna go to our animations, and we're gonna do her somersault. Okay, now I gotta fix her somersaults um, animation here, so I'm gonna do that really. Now this was so much easier. <laughs> I should have did that from the jump, pun intended. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually have it swap in between the collision shapes. So when she's jumping, or when she's not jumping, it's gonna be disabled, and then when she is jumping, it will be enabled, while her standing one will be disabled. Um, the reason why we're not gonna we do that instead of like say shrinking is because it's actually more process intensive that way. 
All right, so I changed the name of this. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to add pay for this. Okay, and now I because I changed the name of this, we can actually just use the variable name. So we can do that, and we can do that. Um, in reality, whoops. I probably should have just. Um, I don't even think I, we need this anymore because the sprite sheet should be should be lined up perfectly now. But anyway, so because we do what what is it I'm doing here? Jumping. So because we now have a jumping collision shape, we need to make sure that it's disabled by default because she's not going to be jumping when she starts. And now we can call this whenever we jump. Now, do I have a jump method? No, I do not. Okay, so let's create that. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I actually want to put these directions in their own method. So let's do that right now. So this will fun function check. Uh, whoa, Jesus Christ, check direction. And all those are in there now. And but we still want to call them. Whoops. So we still want to call them. So we're gonna put them right here. Check direction. And this should still work properly. Let's make sure. Yeah. Okay. Whoops, as you can see, <laughs> we got stuck there, but that's okay, we can fix that later. In fact, we'll fix that right now. I think it's she's just too this is too high. So we're gonna just go here. Click on this. Bam. Okay, save that, and that will actually automatically save right there. All right, so if movement dot x is equal to negative one, meaning if we're moving it left and we are not on the floor, meaning we're currently in the air, we want to get our jump collision. And we want to put dot disabled is equal to false. And then we want to play that animation. So we should be, yes, dot play. And then we want to do the somersault to the left, like so. Uh, I don't know if we have to play that backwards or not, but if we do, we do. So. And then we're going to just copy and paste all that over. And we're just going to change this to a 1, meaning we're doing right. We're going to do that again. And this one will be a right. Now I do need to disable something. And that is the standing collision. Now I'm going to probably, standing collision, add a, um, a condition to this. That way we don't have to constantly do it this way over and over and over again. It will just check it for us automatically. All right, so now if I hit play, that reminds me, I don't think I explained this. If you're wondering how I got those blue bars to show up, it's in the uh, debug menu. Show vis visible collision shapes. Click that on or off, and you'll be able to see it. So if, if it's clicked, if it's checked on, then you can see them. If it's checked off, then you can't. I probably should have said that at the beginning, but you know, whatever. So, whoops. Now, as you can see here, her bottom collision shape is off, and her top collision shape is now on. And that's kind of what we want, but not 100%. Um, we need to put a collision. We need to have a test. Or we need a way for it to, one, reset. And then, B, we also have to be able to, to um, check if we're about to land on the ground. That way, the collision shapes swap back. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use a raycast. So we're going to go back to where it says player, click on that. And then put here another add, and we are going to do raycast. Whoops, a doodle. Raycast 2D. And what the hell is going on with that? And what we're going to do here with that is um, check landing. Hopefully, it's about that right. Okay. Now we're going to go up here. We're going to do a new on variable. Actually, my mistake. So we're going to do check landing, and we're going to roll. So now what we're going to do. As we're going to go back to our player here, and you're going to see she has this giant slong popping out. What we want to do is shove that all the way in. 
right about like that. We want to give it just enough room where it will give her enough time or give the computer enough time to check the floor before she hits it and then quickly swap them. So what I'm going to do now is I need to find a way to swap these around. I believe I put it in the process. Yes, I did. Beautiful. So let's do here. So if has a landing dot is colliding. So what this is saying is if this raycast is ever colliding with a a physics object. We haven't decided on which those physics objects are yet, but it doesn't really matter because we're just we're just going to be testing the ground underneath us. But anyway, if it collides with any type of collision shape, it's going to detect it and call call back as true. So if this ever is true, what we want to do is swap back our collision shape. So we're going to do standing collision dot disabled. I said disabled, much like I am. Disabled is equal to false meaning that it's currently active, and then our jump collision disabled is equal to true. And again, like I said, I might change this later so that it's not as um, repetitive. But now, as you can see now, her raycast is now red. And if I jump up, you see she no longer falls to the ground. Pretty damn cool. Let's see if she has that issue. Yeah, there is a bit of an issue here, as you can see here. Uh, sometimes the collision shape does not collide all the way, and it can cause some funkiness. Um, the easiest way to fix that, it actually, <laughs> it's actually pretty simple, is you just add another collision shape, honestly. So we're just going to control D this, and what we're going to do is we're going to move this one over. this and then we're going to take this one here and we're going to also move this one over like so and now what we can do is as landing one and then we're going to control I think it's alt D nope really I can't just control do this again well that's unfortunate has landing two and then we can change this to we're going to fix this to 1 and then we can also do or I'm going to take this whole thing here I hope you're following along with what I'm doing whoops a doodle so, so all we did was we just added um, the extra collision check so if either one of these are ever um, colliding with something it will automatically reset it for us so now that she has two, you can see, and she no longer has that, that weird issue because now she has a double check. Okay, I probably should have done that with the other one, but you know, whatever. Now that that's done, um, I don't like the fact that she just kind of stops in her animation like this, and it looks like I do need to fix that to a run backwards. What is this? Is this right? Yes, this is right. So we're going to play backwards on that right animation. I'm going to quickly fix that. Backwards. Okay. So now, like I said, um, I don't like the fact that she just stops like this. So what we're going to do is like this portion here. We're going to fix this. Uh, we're going to add it more conditional. So if it's, if the movement is ever zero, meaning we're not moving, we're just going to check the facing. So if current... I can freaking spell. Jesus Christ. This looks like mother effer. All right. If current direction direction is equal to left, we want to get the animation player, put play, and we want it to do idle left. And then we're going to do the exact same thing. We'll see. But this time, we're going to say if the current direction is right. That should keep her from doing bizarre land stuff. So. 
Beautiful. Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> She's still running backwards. <laughs> you really are a cheeky little bee. All right, so let's see here. Run backwards, run R. That's very bizarre that she's doing that. Is there something that I'm not? One second here. I'm gonna need to edit so much crap out here. Okay. I don't know what the hell that was about. But all right, let's do the jump animation now. Since she has this jump thing going on for her, we want her to actually perform that jump act action. So let's do that. <sighs> now where did I put that? Player movement, animation. This movement is on floor. Oh, I just added to these. Okay. I did add it to these. And for whatever reason, it's not playing. Oh, I know why. I need to add one more condition to the uh, the movement. And we had to put and is on floor. And what that's going to do is saying that we only want to play this animation when we're on the floor. If we're not on the floor, don't play it. That was my bad. My biggity bad. All right, now that's valid. Now, really? Are you going to do this to me today? Are you really going to do this to me today, you little piece of garbage? All right, let's see here. What's going on here? All right. If we are blah, 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 blah. Uh, okay, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. That does not go there. That goes here. Bam. And bam. Okay. That needs to be a parameter for the, the animation itself. Okay. Now, when we're... Now that we're done being dumb, you can see she does her somersaults now. Now obviously she that one needs to be played backwards again, but it does in fact work. So hooray for that. So that should be that's idle. Where's the somersault? Play backwards, right? It was on four. Oh, okay. So she that one doesn't need to be played backwards. Okay. 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 Let's make sure that's working again. I can't sell, that's too small. Oh yeah, beautiful. Okay, now that's done, let's do the morph ball. And the morph ball is gonna be pretty much the exact same thing. I probably need to uh, add that animation to be faster. Because I don't think she's going, she's doing her somersault fast enough. Oh no, she is, okay. Okay, maybe the computer just isn't running fast enough. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to delete this, and then I'm going to, and I'm just going to play this to make sure. Okay. And we're just going to do 10. There we go. Now, there is a bit of a problem here, and that's because of me. You can fix that yourself if you want. You just got to move uh, one of the frames over a little bit. But it's not that big of a deal. I'm not going to worry about it too, too much. Okay. Now that that's done... The thing I want to do is add a brand new collision shape. And this one is going to be the morph ball. So let's do collision shape 2D. We're going to do morph ball. Whoops. I got to do collision so I know what the hell this is. Again, we're going to go here. We're going to add a rectangle. And then we're going to have it disabled by a default. And then I want this to be here, and I probably want it to be here on the ground, honestly. More than likely. Uh, we can always fix it later, if we need to. <sighs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. And now that that's done, we are pretty much going to do the exact same thing, except this time, what I want to do is create a new variable, and we want to call this one Morph Ball. Let's, uh, you know, let's just do this. Or maybe I can put like down. Yeah, let's just do down. And that's going to equal input dot is action pre just pressed because we want to do it once and then we just want UI down. Again, later on, um, it's honestly not that hard to change these. If you want to change them, you can just literally just go into your project settings, go to your input, um, 
add a new action. So we're just going to do, let's say down or something like this. Hit, hit enter, and you get this little whatever this is. Click on the press the plus button here, and then all you have to do, as you just saw there, is make sure when this little box is flickering, or the little, I don't know what the hell that little line is called, but whenever that thing is flickering, you know that it's looking for your input. So all you have to do is press the button that you want. In this particular case, I'm going to do down. I said I'm just going to do down. And press OK. <laughs> and then it will physically add to that. And then all you have to do after that is you'll be able to actually call it in like so. All right, so now that that's done, or if I explained that or wasted your time with that, we are going to add a brand new condition. And that condition is going to be my lovely little children, variable morph ball. And that's going to be equal to false by default. And all this thing is going to check is right, when we press down, we want this to be toggled either on or off. Do I have an up key on here as well? I do not. So I do need a way to get um, out of this. So I'm just going to do this. And we're just going to cause this as up. That's the up key. That way, whenever we're in the morph ball, if we press the up key, we can uh, go back to our normal size. And this should be up, up and away. Okay. I'm just going to pull these apart from that. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is say, if if down, meaning if we're currently pressing down, if down and on, and is on floor, let's actually add that. Uh, you know what? Actually, no, let's not do that. Um, what I, what I was going to do is I was going to try to keep us from accidentally transforming into the morph ball uh, when we're jumping, but. I just realized that you can actually turn into a morph ball while you're falling and jumping in the the original Metroid game. So adding that restriction makes no sense. Anyway, if down, we want to put morph ball is equal to true. And then what I want to do, if up, morph ball is equal to false. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is this. So if the morph ball is ever true, I want us to be able to to. All right, well, I figured it out. And uh, Jesus Christ, I have a lot to do. So the first thing we are going to do is give me a second here is we're going to change this right here so the down okay so down morph ball true is going to be we're going to leave that alone and then what we're going to do okay i don't actually remember there's so much i did and didn't do oh i see i'm in the wrong script okay so we're going to delete all this stuff here all this can go away we're actually going to create a new method for that and all we want is uh, these things to either check if it's true or false. So I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to do function uh, check morph ball state. I'm just going to put a pass for right now. And then we're going to actually add that to here. So let's do check morph ball state. Um, okay. So what I want to do is if morph ball, meaning if the morph ball is true, I want it to let's see control V. I want it to disable the stand collision. I want it to disable the jump collision. I want it to enable the morph ball, and I want it to disable both of the ray cast as well. Um, because these raycasts are only going to check um, if we've jumped while we're standing. That's the only time it's going to be checked. Uh, so those can actually disappear. And then what I want to do is else 
and this is essentially going to there we go and what this is going to do is just re-enable those when the morph ball is um, no longer true so when we're out of the morph ball we want those to be enabled again that way the stand collision is um, the stand collision that is enabled okay so now the next thing that I did to create this beautiful thing to work is we need to go down to our check directions here and what we want to do is we want to only check this stuff if the morph ball is equal to false so if the morph ball is not true we want all this code right here I just need to find out um, how far down did I go because I don't remember uh, okay yeah it's actually all this here so we're going to tab and put it in within this block of code so we're only going to check this code if if the morph ball is false and if it's true we want to do something else so next up to that we're going to do uh, let me make sure I think that's true yes all right what else and I'm just going to copy and paste this okay don't worry I'm going to explain I'm going to explain everything that I'm doing here as I go along okay so the first thing we want to do is put a condition to say if morph ball and movement is equal to negative one meaning if we're moving left so if the morph ball so if, if the morph ball is true, so if we're in the morph ball and we're moving left, we want it to um, play the morph ball animation to the left. Now you see here that I have anim.flip horizontal is equal to false. And the reason for that is because our animation down here, excuse me, we only have one morph ball animation. That's it. So all we want to do is flip it to the other side. So, um, Jesus Christ. So the next thing we're going to do is if morph ball is true and we're moving to the right, we want to flip the uh, animation so it's going in the other direction and then we want to play the exact same animation but again it's flipped. So all this is doing is creating a toggle. So if we're going to the left, it's going to toggle it as false because it's already, we're already moving left and if we're moving to the right, we want to flip it so um, it's playing the same animation but in the other direction. The only reason why we didn't flip the animation before with Samus is because Samus has a gun on her right arm and her left arm is different. If both her arms were the same, then we could have just flipped it, but we couldn't. And then after that, um, we're going to do if morph ball and movement is equal to zero, meaning we're in the morph ball, but we're not moving. So we want to play this animation and then we want to uh, we want to immediately stop. And all that's going to do is reset this thing to the very first or the last animation that we played. Okay, now, did I do anything else outside of that? I don't think I did. I think this is everything that I did. I'm just gonna double check this. Um, oh, 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 oh. One thing we wanna do though, is sometimes when we, um, sometimes when we get out, of the morph ball, we want to make sure that the flip is equal to false. And all this is saying is that if we ever exit the um, the morph ball, that flip that we did, we just want to disable it because it will affect the entire sprite sheet, which will make us run backwards when we're trying to move forward. And I think that should be everything. I hope I did not go through that too, too fast. But we're going to test it out right now and make sure everything works. And it should. Okay. Um, I'm already in the morph ball, and that's because I have the animation over here set to that. Make sure your animations are always set to your default, which should be idle stand. Okay. And now. Okay. Go down. Let me see. Yes. Uh oh. Well, this is where we test it. It looks like I forgot to um, enable the um, the stand box again. It's not a big deal. We'll just re-enable that. Um, one other thing that I did not show you is I actually shrank 
this um, morph ball, which is why I was in the morph ball in the first place. So just shrink it a little bit more if you can't um, go under the, um, the the platform that you made. Okay, so I'm just gonna pause this for just a second. I need to do something very quickly. All right, I think I'm back. All right, let me see what the problem is here. Uh, so we're not. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I disabled that because I, I was trying to see something earlier. All right, so this now should work 100%. Yep. All right, beautiful, beautiful. So now we can jump around. We can go under our little morph ball. And we are good to roll. All right, I think that's gonna end it for today. I think the next video that I'm gonna do is to show you how to fire your weapon. So we're gonna have to get into like aiming and stuff. So yeah, I think that's that's gonna be the end of that. All right, well, thank you guys for watching. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye for now, but not for long.